Hello, I'm Anirudh Dhanateker and today we will be looking at generator set ratings. Specifically, we will discuss the power ratings as they relate to different duty classifications. We will then look at the changes in ratings made by the ISO 8528 standard. And finally, we will look at the ratings set by the EPA which classifies generators somewhat differently as part of its effort to reduce emissions. On-site power generation systems can have any of several functions, as the list here shows. These various functions can be aggregated into three main classifications, standby, prime, or continuous. Let's look at the ratings for each of these. Power ratings in kilowatts are published by the generator set manufacturers specifying the maximum allowable loading conditions. The generator set will provide acceptable performance when used for purposes in keeping with the published ratings. It is important to operate generator sets at a sufficiently minimum load to achieve normal temperatures and properly burn fuel. Cummins Power Generation recommends that a generator set be operated at a minimum of 30% of its nameplate rating. These power ratings depend on the duty classification. A generator set might have a power rating of say 2000 kilowatts for standby but only 1825 kilowatt for prime power duty and 1600 kilowatts for continuous to account for life expectancy based on intensity of use. The standby power rating is applicable to emergency power applications where power is supplied for the duration of a power interruption. Note that per ISO 8528 the running time is not expected to exceed 200 hours per year and that the total number of hours at 100% of standby rating must not exceed 25 hours. No sustained overload capability is available for this rating. The unlimited prime power duty classification is applicable when supplying electric power in lieu of commercially purchased power. The number of allowable operating hours per year is unlimited for variable load applications. However, it is limited for constant load applications. In variable load applications, the average power output should not exceed 70% of prime power rating over 24 hours of operation. A 10% overload is available for one hour in a 12 hour period and not to exceed 25 hours per year. Prime power is also a duty classification available for a limited number of annual operating hours in constant load applications like an interruptible, peak shaving, and other applications that normally involve parallel operation with the utility. Generator sets may operate in parallel with the utility source up to 500 hours per year at power levels not to exceed the prime power duty rating. The continuous based load rating is applicable when supplying power continuously to a load up to 100% of the base rating for unlimited hours. No sustained overload capability is available at this rating. Any application requiring more than 500 hours of operation per year at the prime power rating should use a continuous power rating. Here are the highlights of ISO 8528. In 2005, the standard added a definition of standby rating, and there are now very detailed rating definitions. Since 2007, Cummins has adopted ISO 8528 for all Junset ratings. The new definitions are clear. Note, following ISO 8528, when determining the actual average power output of a variable power sequence, power of less than 30% of the junset shall be considered as 30%, and time at standstill shall not be considered. Now let's look at how the EPA regulates generator emissions by size and function. The focus of these classifications is on allowable emissions, but first, some key definitions. Non-road, mobile. Relocated at least once during a 12-month period. These can typically be trailerized or pallet mounted. Stationary generator, emergency standby. Internal combustion engine, the operation of which is limited to emergency situations and required testing and maintenance. Stationary generator, non-emergency standby. An internal combustion engine that stays at site for 12 months and is not an emergency engine. Typical applications would include prime power, peak shaving, or distributed generation. These classifications are evident in the schedule for
for allowable emissions shown here. And here's the schedule for emissions from spark ignited gensets. It takes into account the size of the engine and whether it is used for standby or prime power. The EPA created the Transition Program for Equipment Manufacturers or TPEM to provide original equipment manufacturers with the flexibility to comply with the new emission regulations. This program allows equipment manufacturers to produce a specific percentage or number of units with engines meeting the previous tier standards. The program is only available for non-road mobile applications. Stationary applications cannot make use of this program. If your particular application falls under the non-road category, contact your power generation equipment provider to better understand if you can purchase equipment under this program. Thank you for your attention. For more information, go to www.cumminspower.com.